The Oracle Network. Welcome to another episode of Once Upon a Nightmare. I am your host, Lorraine, and this week I'm joined by Felicia and Tawny from Two Chicks and a Horror Flick. How are you girls, ladies, women? So (laughs) good. Thank you for having us. So good. In all of those versions of myself, I'm great. (laughs) I know, because sometimes when you call women girls, they're like, we're not girls, we're women. And I'm like, oh. Oh yeah, yeah we're I not. think Whatever. we call ourselves chicks in our title, yeah. so I think it's safe. Chicks, babes, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, cool. So why don't you tell everyone who you are and your podcast and give them some deets, tells. Sure. So we are a weekly horror movie review podcast where we talk about one movie at a time normally. Sometimes we do a couple at a time. But we like to get into a little bit of the trivia, the background of the movie, and then talk about how we felt about it. We usually talk about what we're drinking as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then we rate it. So that's kind of the the basic premise. And you can find us on all like major podcast platforms at Two Chicks and a Horror Flick at Instagram. And we also have a website, twochicksandhorrorflick.com, where you can find links to everything else. So how do you guys know each other? Because you live like quite far apart, don't you? Yeah, we actually met in like a um uh a self-development business course oh, online. I love all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm obsessed with it. I, just, I know, I can tell. I consume so much of it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but we met, yeah, we met and we were placed in the same little pod or group. And that's and then it was history. Yeah, we were talk we were chatting on a phone call about something completely different and happened to start talking about scary horror scary movies horror movies Mm -hmm. and then it just blossomed from there by the end of the call we were like we should start a podcast so have you met in person no No. (gasps) oh yeah we haven't i know isn't it weird yet (laughs) you have to go to some like horror convention or something because i did that here and i met phil and laura from the horror project and Stuart from british murders so it was nice to meet them in person but we're we're a bit smaller england's a little bit smaller than (laughs) yeah (laughs) then how far apart we are yeah exactly we're Um, like like what 12 hours away like of a drive or something like if we were to try to drive to each other it's not yeah i've driven across america it's bloody massive jesus (laughs) i drove i was in arizona actually Oh, so geez. yeah i can't remember what place but yeah no i've driven yeah i've drove through quite a bit of it but yeah it's just so long and (laughs) it's long (laughs) just take pages <laughs> we're planning for next year we're planning to visit each other in person like her mm-hmm. come to my house her and, and jade her man and we also want to do at least one horror convention if not more yeah it was really fun the one we went to i'd like to see some bigger names next year because i've already booked my tickets for next year so oh, nice. Ooh, I, want, nice. I want jamie lee curtis to show up <laughs> oh, yeah. i'm aiming really high <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah um so when it comes to horror like I have a particular genre that I prefer so I'm big into like psychological horror what would be your particular favorite when it comes to that I would want to s- yeah sure um I definitely am a psychological horror mm-hmm. uh, lover I think losing your mind is terrifying mm-hmm. so anything that makes me question reality or what I'm thinking um I just absolutely love that mm-hmm. I'm, however, something new as well. I just want to mention it because it kind of blossomed once uh, Tawny asked me to watch High Tension. Right, Tawny? Yeah. When we saw Raw and High Tension was French ex- new extremity horror. Hmm. And um, I'm digging that. I'm digging that a lot. But I, I'll still go with psychological horror because I literally have only <laughs> seen like three of the, the French extremities. So I don't know if I want to dedicate myself to it fully. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Uh, I think for me, I have a tendency to lean more towards paranormal, I guess. I type. do like paranormal, yeah. Yeah. Those always tend to be the ones that scare me the most, which is exactly what I want out of a horror movie. Like, I like to be mm. thoroughly scared. And so that's what I would say, I guess, is what ends up always being the most scary. But I also enjoy... Like the real, I do kind of have a little spot in my heart for like the gory, super gory ones. Like Hostel's oh, no. one of my faves. No. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> um, I have a, yeah. So I end up leaning more towards that too. Cause I think there's this like, at least with Hostel, there's like a real life element to it. And one of Felicia's favorites, The Strangers. So. Yeah, that's why those types of films, they just freak. I mean, I've watched them. But I watch them, you know, with my, I'm the worst watching horror films. I like cover my eyes and ears and everything, but I just find them too, they could actually happen. But I still watch yeah. them to torture myself. But <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. The gore stuff, especially in Hostel, I mean, it's so over the top. I just have yeah. to, yeah, it freaks me out. But yeah, you, th- I feel like that kind of stuff, unfortunately, would go on. Guarantee it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's probably it's... going on. Yeah, yeah. Which is really disturbing really unsettling yeah oh, no. so many so many levels um well that's good um so the film we're doing now is one that you guys pick and that's the one from 2002 and that is the mothman prophecies <laughs> <laughs> We were just making sure there was adequate closet space. Good. This house is yours if you want it. We'll take it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. It's just me. You didn't see him, did you? You didn't see him, did you? You didn't see him. See what? She knew. She was drawing angels. What are you doing here? Somehow between 1 and 2.30, I traveled 400 miles. I've got no memory. The past few months, people have been coming up to me and reporting strange things. Weird lights. Strange phone calls. Hello? Who is this? How do you do when someone comes into your office and tells you they saw this in their backyard? My wife saw some true pictures. Just like this. I'll oh, show you this. You know what that is? One day I started hearing voices. The voices became messages. It was right here. All I could see were these two red eyes. I met him. You met him? He said, do not be afraid. Nine and I will die. Nine and I will die. All 99 are believed dead. You're reading my mind, are you? What's in my hand? This isn't just a message, it's a prediction. Something terrible's gonna happen. Earthquakes are going to happen. People you know and love are going to die. And no matter what that voice tells you... You're frightened right now, aren't you? There's nothing you can do about it. It was directed by Mark Pellington and it's based on the book of the same name by John Keel, released in 1975. The screenplay was written by Richard Heatham, had a budget of 32 million and made just over 55. Hmm, not too bad. Based on real events that occurred back in the 60s in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, it stars Richard Gere as reporter John Klein, Deborah Messon as Mary Klein, Laura Linney as Connie Mills and Will Patton, I love him, as Gordon Smallwood. Two years after the mysterious death of his, death of his wife, John finds himself in a small town of Point Pleasant, 400 miles away from home. Here he discovers there is a strange connection between his wife's death and the strange occurrences that are happening in this small town. I hate that bit. (laughs) You have to read the synopsis in front of people and they're just looking at you. (laughs) Oh, no. We're used to it. Excellent job. Great job. job. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. So did you guys, um, had you you seen it before? Because this was my first time watching it. (gasps) Really? Yeah. You hadn't seen this? I'm really shocked. Oh, yeah. I I haven't seen it either. Oh, really? So you which one have you it picked either? it? Which I take it was you then. It was me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I had seen it um, once when I was much younger. I had to have been like maybe 14, 15, something like that when I first saw it. Yeah. Everybody in my house fell asleep. So I watched it by myself as a child. Mm. I mean, I've always watched horror movies though. So it's not like, you know, yeah. it was really crazy. But this one did scare me. I remember being scared about it, even though... Not a lot scares me, and it's kind of always been that way, but it really freaked me out. And then I watched it again, I think, maybe like three or four years ago or something, and Mm -hmm. I was like, man, because I didn't remember a lot about it. I just remembered that it scared me, and I liked it, so I went back and watched it again, and I was like, shit, this is good. (laughs) This is like a really, really good movie, and so when we had, um, you know, we were trying to pick movies 
we tried to keep in mind something that we could also talk about, like the mm. real life element of yeah. something that's based I on something I love that element to it. Happened. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. We, we knew like... you liked true crime and real, el- real. So we tried to pick that. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm a sucker for all that kind of stuff. But um, what about you, uh, Felicia? Um, I did never saw this before. This did is the first like time. It? Oh, we're getting right into it. Okay, oh, sorry. I'm go. not a very patient no. person. <laughs> no, that's great. I'm not patient either. Here we go. Um, I did like it. I, th- I thought there were some things like the pacing, and we'll probably get into it, that um, it, it, it could have flowed a little bit better, but I did like the idea of it. I loved the Mothman's voice. Um, and I have one little thing, uh, kind of freaked me out and sent me down a rabbit hole. The mm. book is called, um, by Mr. Keel, the, um, what was it? The Mothman Prophecies, an investigation into the mysterious American visits of the infamous feathery Garuda. Mm. And when I saw that, I was like, I have a Garuda tattooed to my arm right here. Oh, wow. What? Yes. It's one of the four Buddhist dignities. So uh, I have the four Buddhist dignities tattooed to my arm and he, and he stands for wisdom. So it didn't stand for like a creepy ass, you know, oh, moth okay. man. I had no idea. I was like, okay. So when I saw that, I was like, oh my God. So I was, I almost bought the book just to see what he said about it. And he, mm. he just referred to it as that it reminded him of Oh. The, of the Garuda, but the yeah. So that trip weird. Out, but, yeah, yeah. it's weird. Yeah, God. Um, no, I I liked it, but I think w- when you said that about the pacing, there were times I kind of kind of went off in my own little world. But I watched mm-hmm. it in two settings because I got interrupted in one of them with my kid, and so I I watched it again today because I needed to, and I preferred it the second time. If There's I'm a lot. With you. There's a lot to like take in, mm. I feel like. And every time that I've watched it, I pick up on more and I appreciate it more for sure. I'll yeah, definitely this- watch it again. I think there's like, for example, that one scene like he was in, unless I missed something, he was in the hotel room, he woke up, he went over to the dresser. When he's in the mirror, you can see the picture of his wife looks kind of like uh, faded or white, bleached out. And mm. then he looks at it and it's not. And then that scene is over. It's I felt like there was several of those. Yeah. It's a very atmospheric movie. I think that's, mm. it's very slow. It's definitely slow and it's a slow burn, but a lot of the tension I feel like comes from just building this atmosphere. And that's, you know, like that, like that shot is supposed to be behind the mirror. It's in the mirror mm. looking out at yeah. him. It's the back of the photograph. And I loved that shot because I was mm. like, one thing that I think I like, we're just, we're just diving in. Um, one of my favorite things about this movie is that it, the portrayal of this, of the like omnipresence, is that the mm. right word? Of this yeah. entity yeah. or whatever. Mm. Like it's anywhere and everywhere. It's through the TV. It's through the mirror. It's over the phone. You know, like they have these big sweeping shots of it flying through the air. Like, oh, it, it's creepy. I love that part of it is that it's always there like watching. But you never really truly see it as much as you think you are. Like, I, th- I think the only time I really got a good view of it is when the kids were making out in the car. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. And it shoots mm-hmm. down and then you see it go up. And yeah. that's, yeah. But I like the kind of whole less is more thing because that way it, you're constantly waiting for it as well. But it never really truly shows up. But yeah, you, you there was no escape in it because he was everywhere. When he was on the phone to John... And he's like telling him what he has in his hand. And when he's like reading the lines from a book, I mean, that whole thing was really weird. I just found it very odd and over the top. It did that, that bit I thought was a bit too over the top. Mm, If I'm honest with you, it kind of lost me there. I was like, all right. Um, But the second time watching it today, I enjoyed that bit more. But when I first watched it, I was like, oh, this is so over the top. But then I think I didn't concentrate on enough the first time, whereas the second time I think I gave it that bit more attention. Yeah, I think I actually have a note on that part um, because I liked it was creepy that he mm. felt like he was being watched right? Mm. because he, this thing knew everything. Mm. But I also thought his questions, his Richard Gere's lines of questioning was like bizarre. Like I don't mm. remember exactly his question and I wrote here, what is happening? 
Like, mm. what do you want? That's what I feel like I would have asked the thing. Yeah. But yeah. more he was like, what do you look like? Or what do you, I don't know. It was, it was bizarre. Um, it didn't ruin it for me or anything. I just mm. wrote here that I would have gotten right to the point. Like what the fuck is happening and what do you want? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, I agree. But I, I do, I do think with it though, um, I didn't know, maybe you can answer this. Was it there to warn them or was it creating this stuff? Like, I don't know. That's the thing. Like I, cause, because he, well, actually no, because th- when he warned them, it's not like they could stop it, especially the plane crash and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, was he evil? I mean, looked evil, especially the Ingrid yeah. Cold fella. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. that's what I couldn't figure out. Like, was he there to warn them or just, I don't know. That's almost torturing them because you can't do anything about that, can you? Like if someone said to you, oh, in 10 minutes, this plane's going to crash and kill everybody, you'd freak out like it would destroy you. Do you know what I mean? Because how are you supposed to get in contact with them? I feel like, and this was actually my favorite, I thought the, the, um, what was the guy's name? Leek, right? Mm. Andrew Leek? Gordon. Gordon, Gordon Leek. Or no, Uh, no, no. Gordon Smallwood. Are you on about Will Patton's character or the writer? Um, the writer, sorry. yeah, leak, yeah. Writer. yeah, leak. Um, I actually loved his portions; was probably my favorite. And so I wrote a few lines down here, if that's okay. Mm-hmm. So he said, "You noticed them." This actually gave me chills. You noticed mm. them, and they noticed that you noticed yeah. them. Yeah, and you're you um you're um you're more advanced than a cockroach. Have you ever tried to explain yourself to them? And from where he is sitting, meaning the window washer, he can Mm. see a little bit further down the road and that it just exists. So I almost felt like this, these entities just exist within all around us everywhere. And there's some people that are just a little more attuned, the whole you notice them and they noticed you noticed. And so then they come in and then they start, maybe they are trying to warn, maybe they're, I I don't know, but I think it's almost like they're trying to communicate and they just exist and it just happened that he was a little more attuned to it. Yeah, because the leak guy, when he first met him, I thought, oh, that was a bit boring because it didn't really lead anywhere. But when he went back and he's almost saying to him, the best thing basically he did was he left it alone so that Mm -hmm. he didn't die. But then when he said to him, um, don't you know, don't you need to know? Like he like because Richard Gere can't let it go. He has to find out. But the way he turns around and looks at him, and, he, and what was it he says to him, he goes, we're not allowed to know. Yeah. His whole, yeah. I mean, it completely changed, didn't it? And I just thought that was really strange. But then when that whole conversation was going on, I don't know, did I hear, could you hear a growling? Yeah, yes. Okay, because I was like, am I hearing this right? But it was like when, when he kind of started pushing it, this growling started, and I thought that was really, so I was like, is he something? Is it communicating mm. through him? Yeah. It's almost like, it, it, it's going to happen, right? Mm. Because that everything is going to happen because that woman was number 37. She dreamt about it when she was a kid. Mm. So Richard Gere was always going to be, this is, I'm just, I'm just, bit, you know, just, mm. <laughs> just sharing some ideas. Richard Gere was always going to be, his wife was always going to die. He was going to be contacted by this mothman. He, he's the one that rescued her and told mm. her to breathe. Mm. So it's almost like this whole thing was always just going to happen. And maybe, the Mothman communication is also a part of that greater picture because mm-hmm. he kind of propelled this whole thing. I never thought of that. Well done. <laughs> Smarty pants. <laughs> well, this was a really great episode. That, no, I'm just kidding. There's so much more. What do you think, Tawny? Um, I don't know. I think, and this, I think that's part of why I like the movie is that there is this unfinished, you don't really know. I mean, at least I don't. Maybe there is someone who has analyzed it and said like, this is what the movie means. But I feel like it does seem to be kind of sinister in a way. Mm. But even even that last thing that happens where um, it leads him home to answer the phone from his wife at mm-hmm. like 12. I thought, is this a way to get him away from that bridge at that time? Because mm. this thing, in addition to being like omnipresent, it also seems to kind of be able to... I don't know how to say this, but it's kind of like time. What a, like it? Not like a time loop, but you know, with Richard Gere coming to that guy's house like several times. Mm. I don't know. It just seems to have a sense of like what's gonna happen and what has happened and all of that. So I don't know 
if he was led back to his house so that he didn't die on the bridge or if yeah. he was led back to the house so that he couldn't warn the people and save them from the bridge. I don't know. I, oh, sorry. Go on, you go. I was just going to say, I thought that he was led back to the house to make a choice. And that was, and he was going to be led back to the house. And that's how it was going to be. He had a choice to either choose life like that, mm. that writer was saying. And that's why Laura Linney called him right before mm. he could choose life or he could choose to be wrapped up in this pain and suffering and searching for his wife. Who's who has passed away and he chose life. And I almost feel like it was, that's what he was always going to, like it was fate. That's what he was mm. always, and I haven't read any, I only read the true story. I haven't read mm. um, any like interpretation of the book. So I could be completely off base. There's just how I read it because he saved Laura Linney and Laura Linney dreamt of herself being saved when she was a child. So it was mm. almost like I think it was almost all meant to be. So do you, what what do you think of the whole, you said about the real story, what do you actually think of that? Do you believe that there's any truth in it or? Do you so think- interesting. I mean, there was so, it was really, really close to what really happened as far as what people were, were thinking. And it brought, you know, out UFOlogists and um, the man who wrote the book and they were trying to figure out what, I, I definitely think when there's a whole bunch of people that are kind of saying that they've experienced the same thing, I believe in aliens and stuff. I don't know if they're coming down and like messing with us, but <laughs> I do believe in supernatural experiences yeah. and UFOs and stuff. So um it's hard to unless they were just this. trying to get terrorism right i'm not terrorism that's not what i meant tourism <laughs> is what i meant if they're trying to get tourism into their town but that would have had to be a big collaboration right well there, yeah. there was something that it's not a phrase that i hear in england but it's a phrase i hear a lot in america when she was talking about because you were saying about how lots of people seen the same thing and if loads of people are seeing it they can't all be lying do you know that way and it's when she says two things she says the first one is and they're good christian people yeah i find that that phrase so bizarre and the second so obviously it's true because they're good christian people why would they lie and then the second time she said to john later on she goes oh about i think 15 other people saw it and three of them were policemen so it has to be true and i'm like why is so much merit being put on these good christian folk and like i'm I'm an atheist, so I don't believe in any of that stuff. I won't say what I was going to say, but, um, you know, each their own. And, um, but then the cops. So why could they be believed because of that? And just the everyday Joe is more, you know, if you're not a Christian or a cop, do you not get believed? (laughs) Not here in America. (laughs) I'm just kidding. That was obviously a very small, small Christian town, right? I think that's Mm. why, yeah, I think that's why it was put in there is it's more of a reflection of the um, setting of this, of the town. Just like, here's where we are. Teeny tiny, you know, town in West Virginia, like this little town reminded me of a town that is right outside of the town that I grew up in that we would go and visit sometimes. And it's just as like little mining town. That's kind of the vibe I got from this town. So too, would you it- have places like that, that are literally everybody in it believes the same thing? Like they're all Christians yeah. or like oh, everyone? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's like some states. Yeah. Like Utah, Utah. is very, very heavily mormon completely all mormon yeah but you don't see states like that i think utah is is special with it being mostly mormon but yeah small small little towns so what if you're not into it you probably don't fit in very well yeah (laughs) oh really you'd be oh okay no i just i just find that very bizarre like that i've never lived in a town like that i don't i don't know but yeah you you see them portrayed a lot i suppose i i grew up in ireland which is very catholic heavy Mm -hmm. and but while everyone basically is a catholic it's it didn't give me that same and i lived in a really small place i don't know i just find what let me take that back i don't want to say and then i'll be quiet so donnie can talk (laughs) i don't want to say like oh you're not welcome i don't really know i'm sure there are some Mm. that are you know you need to fit in or you're not welcome and there's probably others where there since it is so heavily um say Christian or whatever mm. the re- religion is that you are, um, uh, what is it? Not, yeah. Trying to persuade to like, you can't escape it. Right. To, to be a part of it. But 
I mean, uh, if you are a very good Christian person, you would love everybody. So I don't want to say you wouldn't be welcome. That's not fair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't welcome me. <laughs> I have the Garud on my arm. They wouldn't welcome me. So. Yeah. <laughs> and heretic, you're out. I do have heretic on my arm too. Oh God. <laughs> You, burn. You, you burst into flames when she stepped into it. <laughs> yes, I might. I just might. <laughs> but you see her also make comments to him about like, we're not all bumpkins. You know, it's this mm. like, it, there's this, um, you know, it's not like a huge, I don't feel like piece of the movie, or maybe it is, you know, maybe this is one of the themes, the underlying themes in the movie, but there's this small town feel and you've got Richard Gere, who's the big city guy is coming in. He's the outsider, right? Trying to, exp- you know, figure this out and he people don't trust him at first right so i think that's it's just another way to uh show that this is such a small tight-knit community yeah and but i what i like about that is it is kind of like and i do i do think there's something to be said for if so many people experience something it's really Mm. harder to dispute because you've got one person one off it's like yeah maybe you had something happen you had a you know brain something happen and you who fucking knows but it's like you have like 10 people and there was a bunch of people with this real story that experienced yeah. similar stuff i mean that's that starts to get creepy territory for me because it's like how do you dispel that i was gonna say i really like that aspect of it too um what was very satisfying was somebody said this happened like when um the man was like he showed up at my house three nights in a row and and she didn't make him feel like a fool or no, like he yeah. was crazy. She respected him. She was brilliant. Him. She was yeah. Brilliant. And, she, and then asked him questions and investigated stuff that was really nice. Nobody was just dismissed. No, I agree <laughs> yeah. with that actually. Cause she like, obviously she knew Gordon. She's from there and you could, you know, you could not understand, but you could see her leaning towards him, but she was very, I'm a police, per- police woman. And my job is to find out what is going on. I don't care who you are, where you're from. Let's talk. And I did. I really like that about her. She didn't, she didn't take sides, Yeah. you know, yeah. and she didn't um, like, yeah, she, she very much spoke to Gordon, I think with a lot of respect actually. And also John, you yeah. know? Yeah. And then he took the piss out of her a little bit, you know, that way about where she was like, uh, did she say something about we have, like you were saying, she, we have electric, we even have electricity or something. Yeah. She says something yeah. Like that. Um, I love that. She's like, I even have a pair of shoes for church and for school. Remember <laughs> yeah. that? <laughs> I actually got, I actually, when I moved to back to the UK in 2007, I've been living in Ireland for years at that stage. And one of the stu- students there, cause I went back as a mature student to university and they were like, um, they were talking about Ireland being a third world country, didn't have running water. I mean, we were like one of the richest countries in the EU at the time, I think it was with the whole Celtic tiger and everything. But, and she was like, yeah, no, no electricity, no running water, third world country and stuff like that. And I was like, <laughs> you're like, what? what are you fucking on about <laughs> I know because then the, the the teacher actually looked at me and she went I think Lorraine's got something to say about that and like I was just like you fucking idiot I says the country you can see the country basically from where you're sat no running water but she did it with such like yeah no running water and I was like what what you what? know it's it's really weird when people say this stuff and I was just like no but um yeah I think but the people do think that of like certain places like small town Ireland <laughs> you know when you're at mm. the sticks that you just don't you know there's a human being. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. But yeah, sorry. <laughs> Sidetrack there. Let me see, Connie. Do you know, did you not think it was weird that, that at the end that she kind of started like, despite everyone telling her all this stuff, she stopped kind of listening. Like she goes, I'm not going to live my life in fear or believe it, which I get. You can't. But it was like she was dismissing everyone, I felt. Yeah. I thought that was weird too. It mm. was like, okay, but you're you're watching this happen why wouldn't you i don't know i felt like it was almost like denial she was like i feel like she got scared kind of what's the point type thing of like yeah no i yeah i don't know i just thought she was very dis- all of a sudden just like she changed her tune yeah i thought so too i i, I think i read it like tawny did as well it all became too much mm. and she was yeah. like which i mean isn't great for a police officer i guess if they need to investigate stuff and help people but she was like no I can't do this anymore or maybe it's because you can't like we all tend to like to control everything and like you know you you were talking about self-development and all that kind of stuff and that's one thing I'm trying to do is like step away from things I can't control because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day if it is this thing that's going around 
she can't actually do anything about it. So maybe it's better to kind of say, look, I can't do anything. It's not like she's trying to track down a killer, you know, that she could do something about. It's like she can't do anything about it. So why, what's the point of panicking over something you can't control? Is she's going to run around de- yeah. their entire life following this Mothman's whispers and look at John. To prevent stuff to happen. Yeah. He's losing his mind. Don't you need to? Yeah, like he just was, he was going insane. Look at what happened to poor Gordon. He was losing his mind. Yeah. yeah. And she's just like, I, you know, she even tells him, you have to make a decision to keep chasing this or just live. And I mm. do feel like at the end of the movie, you are felt with this, or you're left with this feeling of um, the inevitability of, disaster and bad things happening to good Mm. people for no fucking reason it's just totally Mm. random Mm. and for that reason i I feel like it's a very emotional movie for me because you've Mm. got the last bridge scene and all of these people that you've kind of grown to know a little bit throughout the Mm. movie like the couple who are going to get married Mm. and you just saw him die on the bridge and see her come out of the shop with a wedding dress on. I mean, mm. it's just, I cry every time I, so I watch it and I was like crying through the back part of the movie. Cause it's just, it's inevitable that this stuff is going to happen. And so that you do have to kind of step away just as a human being in the mm. world, you have to be able to just say like, there is stuff I can't control. I can't live my life being mm. scared or trying to, you know, obsess over these things or live in the past. I just have to, you know, because it was real right wasn't it that uh, bridge thing i didn't realize that was a real thing yeah yeah so it was that's yeah i was like i'd never heard of it before the me neither no so it was quite um sh- i suppose that's for people that actually remember it because oh yeah. no was it was this was it the 70s that it happened or i think you said 60s was it 60s? late 60s late yeah, 60s, 60s yeah, 67 or something wasn't it? yeah, yeah. um but yeah, because there was like, I think there was like four, yeah, 1967. Yeah, there was 46 people killed. And it was, uh, and I think as well, because there was like, I always find that really weird, that scene, because I suppose, you know, we're watching a film, so it's easy for us to go, why didn't you, like, why didn't they just get out of their cars? Like they, I felt they, a lot of them had time to kind yeah. of get out and run, but yeah. they didn't. And I, I find stuff, and I know you shouldn't do that with films because, you know, it's a film. But I, I find that really frustrating when people were just kind of like sat there. I suppose yeah. you'd be confused. Why are you shouting at me to get out of my car? Is it someone's going to hurt me if I get out of my car? It's nighttime. I'd be running. I'd be get out of my car and run. I think I'd have got out of my car. I was planning it. I was like, I was, yeah. this is how I grab my kid. This is. <laughs> yes. yes. I think I was, you don't... if I was in front of the line, I would have maybe ran mm. the little light thingamajigger. But yeah, if you're back, I think I would have gotten out of my car too. I'd like to think. Mm. <laughs> but people did start to panic. I mean, here's a reason maybe why you wouldn't um, is people did start to panic and started trying to drive and they were like driving into other cars and stuff. You're you're kind of less protected just as your, as your body than you are in the car until that bridge goes down and you hit the water then you're way better off i think being outside of the car i think about survival things like all the time as i'm watching this stuff because i'm like you're almost better off i wondered like would you be better served if you were on this bridge as it was going down would you be better served just jumping in the water so that you can like get in and try to swim away and you're not like trapped in the car i don't know i I was thinking that because i was like then but would would a car then fall on you or would the bridge fall on you but would it be better, like you said, I think I would have, you know, I mean, hindsight's great, but I think I would have got out and ran. Yeah. But I think you'd have more of a chance because as well, like if you've got an electric car with that lock, if it like, would you be out? Could you see him? He was trying to open the car and then you've got the pressure of the water. Yeah, yeah. I think I would have went with myself rather than than the car. Yeah. Or if you had to go down in the car, you got to roll those windows down <laughs> so you don't get <laughs> yes. locked in there. <laughs> when I was little, I was so terrified. I don't know. I must have saw it in a movie, but I was terrified of going over, like going over a bridge into the water in a car. And so whenever we crossed a bridge, no matter what the temperature or weather, I rolled down my window. Really? And if we had, a, if we would have gone over once, everyone would have been really happy I did that. <laughs> Right, but what? Why did why did you do that? Did you? Is it just something you? I yes, was terrified you, of being trapped in the car and not being able to open the door and not being able to roll down the windows because we're in the water. So I would roll down the window so that if we did go in, I could swim out the window. But you never what, saw anything or nothing happened. You just had this feeling. I must have saw something. Yeah. But yeah, I've always, uh, yeah, 
I was really little. My parents watched a lot of horror movies, though, so I probably saw <laughs> something. Yeah. I, I just can't pinpoint it. I can't say, oh, I saw that and it made me yeah. think of it. Yeah, I have, a, I have things. Mine is, um, which I don't know why, but when I'm walking with my kid, everyone's like trying to stop their kid from running in the road. I'm always looking out for for white vans with side doors so they don't stop. Pull out. You know what I mean? It's just the things yeah. that you, and I've never seen that happen. Like, you know, it's, it didn't happen to me, but it's just, you get these things in your head and I'm in my, I'm 47 and I still think about stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah. When we walk, whenever I walk with any of my mm. kids, um, they're on the inside. I'm on the outside. Yeah. So someone can't mm-hmm. yank yeah. them from me. God. It's like a never ending track. I feel like that's something just really common with people who like, um, you know, true crime stuff too, right? As mm. I'm constantly mm. assessing where I'm parking, how I, what I'm, who I'm parking next to. I call and give updates if I'm, it, it, like, yeah, I call Jade if there's something shady happening. I try to lock my car. Every time I always, I get as in soon it. as I get into it, yep. locked. As soon as I get in, yeah, mm-hmm. locked. Yeah, I do as well. And if I'm walking, whether even if it's a woman, funny enough, if I'm walking down the street and somebody's walking behind me, because I I've always got headphones in, um, I will stop and pretend I need to do something on my phone so that they walk past me. Pass, yeah, yeah. Men, I've women, done that kids, don't matter who it is. <laughs> so something might not have happened to you, but I bet. Because I know I can, I can give a, a real life story to every single one of the examples we shared, mm. where someone who didn't do that lock their car mm-hmm. or have their child, you know, walking on mm. the inside or whatever, those things happen to them. Yeah. The kid was stolen, someone got into your side of the car, and that's why we do it. Yeah. And uh, true, I suppose, because I've been like reading about true crime since the 80s. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it gets in there. Yeah. It gets yeah, in there. Me and too. Get, yeah. It's horrifying, isn't it? Yeah. It, is. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I don't even want to leave my house now. I'm I know. I like when you need I get saw in there. Her... <laughs> yeah. Get your house. I know, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> At least there's something like I really I'm a really light sleeper. I lock mm. I check every window and every door every single same every single night. Um yeah, sometimes uh, yeah, my husband snores really loud. Sometimes I'll just say Felicia relax, I'll wear my ear earplugs and, and mm. go to sleep but a lot of the times i'm like i'm just gonna like sleep on the sofa because i don't want to wear my earplugs because i want to be able to hear for all the murderers that are coming into my house all right. the murderers that are trying to get here I there's about like 10 of them outside tonight <laughs> <laughs> i um can when she was sitting in the presence mm. she was just sitting there under the mm. tree i was like oh shit i know she's gonna end up in the water with these presents floating above her but i thought maybe the the um power the this the nuclear yeah the plant the plant yeah. sorry plant i just kept wanting to say station yeah. i thought that was going to explode then mm. and then but no it was the bridge because oh, so we could I see know. that from the bridge couldn't we yeah yeah, yeah. i know they really yeah they really confused that one because i i thought that that was going to happen because i hadn't a clue about this story so i didn't know what was going to happen but i thought the whole it was really quite sad, actually, because obviously Christmas, like, I didn't think of this, but it's basically a Christmas film in a sense, isn't it? Because they've got all yeah. the presents and then when the cars are under and all those presents are there and then you've got the lights um, of the cars looking up and then they show the lights of the Christmas lights mm-hmm. on the street of something that's supposed to be like this magical time. I thought that was so sad. Yeah. You know, because you it's- saw some kids, didn't you, in the cars and stuff like that. and Yeah. You know. And you you know that some of them like mm. died in the cars going over. It's the juxtaposition of the, mm. and again, it's it's really sad. It gave me chills as you were saying that because I don't even know that I made that connection with the lights under the water, but totally. And I think there's also, I mean, this is like kind of semi-related, but I feel like there's a really good use of the color red. And red is a very Christmassy color. Like when um, Connie goes running up to the house, Gordon's house at some point, they have like a red star on the front of the house. And it kind of adds to that like ambiance and, you know, red of the eyes of the Mothman creature and stuff. It's just Mm. nicely all like intertwined for me. And I think that's another thing that I really love about it. Yeah, because when they're in the car, that couple that are making out, there's a lot of red there. Mm. isn't there when they yeah. they do it and with, with the lights I didn't spot that you know the lights in the cars I didn't spot yeah. that the first time I watched it that was the second time I watched it you know I didn't make the connection because I was too busy like oh my god they need to get out of the water but <laughs> yeah I think some especially when you're doing for a podcast sometimes I think you need to watch them the second time 
but every time you watch films you do see something different I find you know yeah. you could watch this again and be like oh I never noticed that but yeah no that the red was everywhere and it was but the thing is like yes it's very much a Christmas color but it's also a color of you know blood death yeah you know H- hell I guess kind hell of. yeah Evil. like yeah. his Evil. whole hotel room is like dark red mm. right yeah. and so that was yeah. interesting the light on the phone when it lights up and he keeps getting these calls and then you've got the two red lights on the bridge like it's it's everywhere. all warning through yeah. Warning, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. You're right. I never I thought of that in such that. such detail. Yeah, there was forty six people who died. Two people were not found. Yeah, I think I read something about um, in that real one, some guy was like, "Where's my kid and my my wife?" And they were found like four weeks later or six weeks later or something in the real, oh. in the real event. That's awful. But, but apparently yeah. it was just like one bolt or something that came loose that wasn't secure enough or something. And then that was it. The whole thing just came apart. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't do any research on the actual No, story. I just, I didn't do loads. I just saw, just saw a little bit because I, I didn't, um, obviously I didn't know. And I didn't know that the river joined both of them, you know, West Virginia and Ohio. Mm. My geography probably isn't as good as it should be for, <laughs> for America. <laughs> I know some of it. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was. I ha- I have it right here. It was. Um, uh, it collapsed under rush hour traffic. It wasn't mm. used to holding that many people. Mm. Um, there was a failure in a single eye bar in a suspension chain yeah. due to a small defect of zero point one inches deep. Yikes! Oh my god! Like, how do you even build a bridge that massive? and not have an error of <laughs> that tiny it seems like it would be riddled with at least mm. you know what i mean yeah that many little defects i mean that's insane that is crazy that is nuts i wonder though what people would think about them like putting this folklore of the home often thing like to it like the way they like i don't think that that actually had anything to do with the mothman thing in real life it's just something that happened around the same time, isn't it? Yeah, I think because they were seeing those things and then this happened to the bridge. They kind of think it's, yeah. That they kind of think that it was related. Because mm. um, if you think about it, and I won't deny it, I'm a, I'm a proud, you know, uh, person who gives some credence to conspiracy theories, depending mm. on what they are. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a little truth behind every story right so Mm. but just depending on how true but if you think about it we have like say in america and maybe there as well ufos right Mm -hmm. so everybody sees this thing and it's crazy and it's wild and then all of a sudden the government or whoever you know comes out and goes no 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 just a weather balloon or no 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 it was just a this or no 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 it was just a that and some people just go oh it was just a that don't be crazy Mm. and then other people are like no fucking way that was a weather balloon you know what i mean so that might have been the same mentality that this whole town is like in Mm. fear because people are experiencing this weird shit and then here comes you know the whoever i keep saying the government but whoever inspects the bridge and stuff whatever and says this was the cause and they're like nah man it was moth man (laughs) right (laughs) that fucker is at it again (laughs) but they didn't that is part of the true story, right? They didn't experience any more of this after this event. Yeah, I think that was the last yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it was the last time. You're right. Hmm. I just, it's crazy. I mean, yeah, it's like, are they related? Maybe it was the Maybe Mothman. Not. But weird. So were they having like visions or what? I don't know what happened actually. Like. What, in real life? Yeah. 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 Or was it that... just several sightings? Of I this think thing? it was. Um... Pretty much like in the movie. Mm, yeah. Like those two kids that were making out in the yeah. car and they saw the bright light and like a lot of like just exactly what was in the movie. Mm, okay. Yeah. Cause it just, but I think as well as you might, especially at night, you know, the way sometimes you look out, like me at the back of my house, it's just like fields for as far as I can see. So it's very dark and your mind might play tricks on you. So you might, because everyone's talking about it, some people might think they're seeing things yeah. that aren't necessarily there. You know, so it might not been as many, but, you know, I also think that there was enough, you know, there was something there, but it's, it's, it's kind of like, I do believe in a lot of stuff that, you know, is kind of hard to explain stuff like, you know, this and ghosts and all that kind of stuff. But I, 
which is really weird actually because I don't believe in God or any of that kind of stuff but yeah I believe that even though this has never been proved to me like this type of stuff I believe that some of that's real but I don't yeah. believe in the other stuff isn't that weird that's weird I think I would say the same thing for myself though like I oh, okay. I don't <laughs> maybe not so weird yeah. then <laughs> no but I think there's just there's no way to say you know that there's not something there that maybe we just don't understand yet you know and so who knows I don't rule it out even though I think I'm I probably lean a little bit more on the skeptical side like I think that's a good point you've got a tight-knit mm. community people who talk a lot people mm. probably all go to the same church mm. somebody's Trust probably each other somebody's hearing yeah. about these stories of people seeing this thing maybe it plants the seed and then they think they see it right who knows that could be a possibility but I just I think there is room for stuff that we can't explain and this is such a weird widespread thing that happened that I'm it's just interesting. It's unsettling. And I think as well, because you know, like they know these people, they've grown up there all their lives. Like everyone knows everyone could, for years and years and years. And like one thing I tend to do with people is I see it is what they're doing out of character. So if you've known someone for 50 years and they're always this solid guy and they're this, that, and, the other, and all of a sudden they're talking like this, you would think to yourself, wow, that's really out of character. This guy's not dramatic to all this girl. And then all of a sudden they're talking about this it would make you kind of listen to them in a sense because you're like, this doesn't make sense. Like, why are they saying these things? Yeah. You know? Yeah. This town is so bought into this. Totally mm. agree with that. And they are so bought into this that they literally have an annual festival for the Mothman. They have a museum. Like there were, uh, I was trying to find how many people, but there were several people that said they saw a winged, uh, a man sized, bird creature with red eyes with red eyes i think if they're all describing the same thing yeah it's hard to believe that it can't be true at the same time as <laughs> right yeah yeah but then how do you prove it that's the thing it's like how, people's word isn't good enough anymore right you need yeah. you need actual proof so how do you how how do you prove it like you're not gonna get a photograph of it because you're you know you're gonna be too terrified you're not gonna be like just hang on a second you know <laughs> right <laughs> selfie and um <laughs> But it's not especially back out, then, either. maybe yeah. now though, maybe now, but back then, absolutely not. Right. We didn't have, but we know, say let me go get now, my film camera. What do we have on camera now? Do we have some, I know the odd time you see something a bit supernatural, like things moving, but I think the problem is now we've got such great technology that you can Skeptics. make stuff look like, so I would find that very difficult to believe. Yeah, because... I agree. It's like the flip side now. Is you're either just believing people's words that you know they're not they're not crazy or lying, versus now I I've talked to Tawny about this like I just want really good actual paranormal footage yeah. because everything I see I'm like nah they could doctor that. <laughs> I have a question then for you. Do you believe in the work of um, Lorraine and her fella Warren? I can't remember his name. Ed Je Lorraine. Jeff. Ed. Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Close. Do do you do you believe in any of that stuff? Because there's some people who are like they're full of shit, and then there's like so I don't do you know. Believe... I've only read a little bit about them. Have and you they... seen the films? You... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I would like to believe that they yeah were doing like some real shit because I think it's just really interesting. But I have also read. I think that you know there's accounts of them sort of stretching the truth or not being. Mm totally on the that up and up could be extreme yeah highly possible that there there is some um, but then there's this like this encounter with my brother he when he was a baby like starting talking he used to sit talking to someone and mum was flicking through a picture you know a photo album and he she went oh that's the guy that comes and talks to me and it was her dad who had died and then he never came back after that now he was too young to be making shit up yeah you know so do yeah. like you have to be like welcome to it because they say how come he this guy can see all that kind of stuff so if you were like open mm -hmm. to seeing this in a positive manner maybe like would we see stuff so this okay. is me speak this is just me obviously it's me speaking, is it really you it's really me <laughs> i just i believe <laughs> in i believe in claire's uh you know like clairvoyance claire mm. sentience all of those mm -hmm. i absolutely believe everybody has it though mm -hmm. um and you can develop it yeah. You have to be open to it though. Yeah, like I think I it'd be really difficult for my husband to do. <laughs> oh, my, my fella. No. no. No way. 
Nice. But you know what? It made me even think, you know, like, um, I think it's Claire Salience is smelling, but where you can smell energetic information. Mm. So if you think about it, if you didn't know you had that and you just always like, do you smell that? Think about it. If you went, do you smell that? And someone next to you, like Tawny was like, no, no. I don't. You'd be like, huh. You wouldn't go, wow, I think I have a power. You, yeah. Who, who would even know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I um, I do believe in all of that. I've had experiences with my own, that I shared with Tawny, with hmm. my own kids, with, um, I didn't know how to explain it. And I just, what I don't know is, is it, like, how far does it go? Can you really hmm. be possessed by a demon or not? Is, um, are they, are there really people trying to communicate you to, with you so you can communicate to their loved ones? Are they like, what actually is it is where like you aliens, hmm. I mean, obviously there's other life in the universe. Mm -hmm. I think anybody that denies that is fine. You can have your opinion, but I mean, mm. look how big the universe is. It's just insane it's just to think us. that there isn't, right? <laughs> so there's definitely, but are mm. they here? Are they coming here? I think that they are, but are they coming here and kidnapping cows and doing experiments? And like, maybe, maybe not. Like how, how much of it do I believe really what, what is the existence? You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause there's extreme. Cause like when you look at something like the exorcism of Emily Rose or something, like how yeah. extreme is that? Like, mm. and there's a lot of cases like that. And yeah, you have to wonder, but then you see her doing these things that you're just like, that, there's no way you can do that as a person. Like, do you know what I mean? So it's, yeah, it's hard to know. God, how terrifying. I think part of me just doesn't want to believe that you can be possessed by a demon because no. that is terrifying. Yeah, mm. the highest level of scary. <laughs> yeah. Highest level of scary. The only way out for you is death. Mm. Yeah. I mean, right? If you watch all the, I mean- that's terrifying. I yeah. don't believe that. Because they're always true. horrible. They're not like yeah. nice ones that make you get up in the morning and work out and eat salad <laughs> every day. Really. And then they're what on their way fit? and you're like, wow, look at me. Can Thanks, you go to my mate? She needs to lose 20 pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. This is great. You've changed my life. Yeah. I think because I don't believe in just the construct of heaven and hell and that sort of thing. I think these ideas are are man constructed, man made because we couldn't possibly even fully understand with our brain power what it actually is. So we've put these in place so that we could feel like I have a purpose because I do this because I follow these rules. And that's fine. I didn't mean to sound placating because some people need that to feel safe and that's totally fine so i think demons fall so deeply into that heaven hell that i tend not to believe that but maybe bad energy like we just watched amityville horror mm -hmm. i believe in energy but can energy get into you and and change you like that guy go ahead tony yeah no i was just gonna say like for sure there's moments where um, and Jade and I talk about this a lot, like there's just places that we've been that we are like, there is, this is not, and again, I'm not particularly open, I don't think, to this type of stuff, like, hmm. but there, there are definitely, you know, moments that I've had feeling, like I've been in a place that I'm like, this is not good, something is weird. It doesn't feel right. Yeah, and yeah. I want to leave, like. No. Everybody's open. Yeah. Believe it, trust it. I always <laughs> wonder, like. If there is like a heaven and hell, like what's the cutoff? <laughs> right. <laughs> How good do I have to be? <laughs> oh, right. You know? Everyone has an opinion on that, on yeah. how good you well, have exactly, to be. Well, exactly. Because you think of like Mother Teresa and you think of like Edmund Kemper. Yes, they're extremes. But then, you know, the guy that just, <laughs> you know, robs a shop because he can't feed his kids. Does he go to hell? <laughs> yeah. How about the person that just maybe drinks a little too much or maybe sometimes loses their temper, but they're, you know, they're other than that, they're well, pretty I'm good. Fox, <laughs> we need some stages. We need it in stages, not just. Oh, Dante stage. gave some stages. Yeah. Dante's yeah. Inferno gave yeah. me stages. We need stages. <laughs> See, somebody answered that question for you. They're like, we need stages. <laughs> this is what we've got. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> Um, oh God, I don't we... believe in those stages, by the way. I yeah, don't want but... your audience to be like, oh. <laughs> you're either fucked or you're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Right. Anything else about this film since we've gone off on it? I did love the voice. I loved how oh, they yeah. um, portrayed that voice over the phone and how it changed. And it was very eerie and very creepy. And I, I really liked that. 
<laughs> I'm glad that you came back to that because I, I do. I also want to gush about that for a second because I think it's so easy to tip into something that is uh, cheesy, doesn't feel right, but it's so, um, there, there's like this high frequency and this low frequency that doesn't feel stupid. It feels very, it like, I don't know. I want to say ethereal. Is that the right word? Yeah. And even when he goes and has the voice, you know, analyzed and they're like, oh, it's not a human voice. It's not vocal cords. Like there's like, there's just so many unsettling moments in the movie. And I think this is one of my favorites and it gives me chills every time I watch it is, you know, they're like, this isn't even a human being. That is fucking scary. (laughs) I don't know. I just. When he said that, it wasn't enough of a reaction for me. Like when he said to him, it's not even a human being. It was like. You know, it's it's not Ted from down the road. It's something else. Like, do you know what I mean? It was, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was just so like, oh, well, you know. It, yeah. You know, if someone said to me that someone's been talking to you and they're not human, I'd be like, I'd give a bit of a reaction, I'd like to think. Yeah. But You'd be just, shocked. Yeah. There was just, you know, that there was moments like that where there just wasn't anything there. I don't know. I just find that really bizarre. Hmm. maybe richard Gere just had a little bit too much botox or something right before filming <laughs> so, couldn't move his face <laughs> i i don't think he looked like he had botox at all i'm just trying to give him the benefit of the doubt for maybe not having <laughs> strong reactions <laughs> maybe he was shock you know though, sometimes yeah. when you're shocked you just can't say anything but yeah i thought i i found um in indrid wasn't that his name Indrid cold yeah it was really creepy and i did find the whole you know like the second time watching it when he was like able to literally say everything like chapstick the way he says that like i was just like fuck yeah. it on mate you just gave me kills when you said that. <laughs> i'm not human <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no he it was just and i th- i thought it was um the way he's just like oh can you because he says to connie can you just run over to gordon's house so there's this thing that's just at gordon's house you don't know what it is you don't know how dangerous it is you don't know what it's going to do and he's just like i'll pop over there connie I'm just on the phone because he wants to find out what happened to his wife, doesn't he? Yeah. 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 You know, did yep. he find out? Because I feel like I've missed it if he did. Uh, What happened to his wife? Like, I know, like, yeah, the car crash and stuff. But like, why her? Like, did did he say anything about that? Because I feel like I've missed it if he did. No. No. no? no. Okay. There was no explanation given because doesn't he ask? He's like, hmm. you know, what? Um, what happened to my wife or whatever and he's yeah. I don't remember what the the reaction to that is but he was like you want to know why it's you yeah it, but he doesn't answer that either it's just left and then I think I, you get the answer with that guy the author who says we're not supposed to know or we're not yeah. allowed to know yeah there is something I wanted to ask you which maybe goes back to I mean, I'm going back on my original stance that all of it was meant to happen and blah, blah, blah. When he didn't answer the phone call and he ripped the phone from the wall and then it rang again, but he left. Then it shows the picture of her and it sounded like a release. And then it made me want, like, it remember went to her eye. You can see the red oh, Mothman the red, and then yeah. he disappeared and it was like a <sighs> in the background. Mm. It almost made me think, was that her? Was her spirit being tied because and maybe it's nothing to do with the mothman maybe the mothman is like a freaking amazing prophet person because maybe he's like you need to live your life and Mm -hmm. he's so he's keeping her here by obsessing and not living his life but then he finally chose to leave and not answer the phone call and then she was released so maybe that's the lessons that he's teaching but then why only this guy gets to learn this amazing lesson and all those 46 people on the bridge had to die that's not fair for this guy to be able to learn how to live his life but maybe it's because he was open you know the way when they Mm. like we were saying about how people aren't open to this kind of thing maybe he was because he was so desperate in this Mm -hmm. you know he was willing to basically believe into anything do anything to find out what this was like it was obsessed so maybe maybe maybe... all the people if they would have been more open they would have also gone off the bridge yeah because a lot of people would look at stuff like this and just think no you mental yeah you know whereas with him he was like give me all the information you know you know when you want to talk about something and someone lets you go on for hours and you just don't want to shut up because you've got a window there maybe he was yeah Yeah. (laughs) finally (laughs) Yeah, that's why he was willing to do so many tests. Yeah, 
It's yeah. Like, <laughs> keep going. Whatever. I um was curious about this injured cold because I thought, why? Where where did this it really explain it much? And I did find this little like creepy wiki thing that injured cold commonly known as the smiling man mm. is an allegedly humanoid entity his name comes from his tendency to smile at those who encounter him it is said that he still visits west virginia to this day weird yeah. i wonder yeah i wonder like has anyone recent because there's been no recent sightings of him has it mm -mm. but this is like a different thing than the mothman right well the mm. mothman called himself injured cold though okay yeah remember on the phone he said my name is injured cold so i was trying to find like well what does this injured smiling man have to do with the moth man um it is says it does say that um that a lot of ufologists mm -hmm. um think maybe like he's come down which there's a lot of really cool stories about men um uh oh gosh i'm totally forgetting but there's these this man and like a few other people that came down, they even visited the White House, all of this sort of thing back in the 60s. And they were said to have come from mm. outer space and then they were gone. Something, th um, I'll look it up anyways. Mm. So like these people, these beings coming down that are taking human shapes, but there's something unhuman about them. I thought I'd throw it out there because he called himself injured cold. I thought I he was a demon. Know. I don't know why I thought that. I, I thought maybe I had done some research the last time I watched this and I read him about injured cold being a demon and that's why he can see and know everything but i could have made that up in my head i do that sometimes i don't know if someone told me or i made it up yeah <laughs> i see like the close encounters of injured cold that i see a lot of stuff around ufos but i don't know i haven't studied in my whole life mm -hmm. like i don't know you may just some stuff that i looked up yeah, so, so the Mothman and Injured Cold are the same thing. I think in the movie they're supposed to be, but in in reality, no. I think they're different. Because the Mothman they're relating them, the, maybe Mothman? maybe they're relating them, or maybe they just did for the movie. So, what was the story with the nurse? You know the way towards the end, Richard Gere goes to that quarry, and the, there's a, like a, a big chunk taken out of the wall. And then yeah. he sees the nurse because the nurse was like, I can't remember what he said now, but he said something she when knew. she knew she knew in the hospital. So like, w was the nurse like another version of this? Or was he actually a real nurse? This was another scene where I was like, so I can't wait to hear what Tony says, where they, he showed up, he saw the nurse and then he left. And I was like, okay, well, did we need that scene? Yeah. What did all. you read into it, Tony? I don't know. I don't know if I have any, like, answers or read on it. But in in addition to showing him, and they kind of show him in the silhouette of that hole in the wall, right? And he's got, like, one shoulder kind of up. And I feel like you see that imagery over and over again. And it is sort of like you're seeing, uh, but it's like the outline of the kind of Mothman or injured Cole. And so maybe it is supposed to be him taking another form. And I think... I don't know. I don't know if that's the intent, but there is sort of this, I guess this is what I was trying to say earlier. There's this like cyclical thing happening kind of throughout the movie. You've got this guy showing up in the same, you know, high one shoulder stance. And then it happens over and over again throughout the movie. Just like mm. you see the cyclical like thing of the red lights coming up. And then you also have Gordon um, answering the door for Richard Gere, like several times, apparently. So I don't know what that is, it, but I like it. <laughs> like, I don't have like an explanation, but I think that's part of why I like this movie is because there's so many open-ended things and you don't know. And it just feels like, I like stuff that when I'm watching it, I'm like, what the fuck? In a good way though, not in a bad way. Because sometimes I think it can get too jumbled and it can feel too random. Like people just started throwing bullshit in there. This does feel connected in a way that maybe I'm not able to, um, articulate but there's just something about it that feels like it's all woven and was like you were saying Felicia maybe meant was meant to happen and maybe but yeah I don't know if we needed the scene necessarily because well I like that idea that maybe the mothman was speaking through that man like uh just like Lorraine was saying it felt like the mothman was almost speaking through that author 
in that mm. one sense where one he kind moment. of was like, we're not supposed to, like, he got all weird. We're not supposed to know. It was almost like, stop pushing it. You're not supposed to know. Um, and that the Mothman had a gateway to yeah. to communicate. And it was very quick. Because yeah. anybody that looked at those pictures, you know, when he was, the the, the nurse was like, she's, she's drawing angels. Those are not like I know. Angels. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I thought. I was like, why are they calling them angels? They look like some, you know, like you've got some bad thoughts in your head you know well you know though i wonder like we have these ideas of what angels look like right beautiful big wings and all of that lots of light and then it's curious because i don't know if you've seen midnight mass yes I've, i'm five episodes in okay so i mean like i don't want to ruin anything for listeners but that's a very different idea of an what an angel or could a god, look like a god's messenger could look like right yes yeah, it's, it it doesn't seem like he's so. From what I get, anyway, I don't feel like he's a good guy. I don't yeah. like him. <laughs> <laughs> but this reminded me. I brought that up as well because this reminded me very much of him, of Mothman. Yeah, based on the pictures and stuff. Mm. Except the eyes are yellow versus red. But but I think for me with this, I don't know. I think what's confusing for me is I don't know whether I'm supposed to think he's good or bad. Whereas usually when you watch stuff like this, you're like, okay, he's the bad demon or the good demon or whatever. Whereas in this, I'm like, I don't know if he's trying to warn them, but I feel like if he is, he could give him a bit more time, you know, you know, a little less cryptic. Yeah, exactly. Oh God, that drives me nuts in films. I'm like, just fucking spit it out, man. Um, (laughs) Are we talking about this Mothman movie or Midnight Mass? mothman movie mothman Um, yeah but yeah in midnight mass i feel like he's bad but i'm not entirely sure um but with this i i was like oh he's actually nice he's a nice guy and then like oh well he's not and then i just don't know what i'm supposed to think yeah i agree i don't know either and i think that like they said we can't know i just really love that line you're more advanced than a than a cockroach have you ever Mm. tried to explain yourself to one of them Mm. So if this Mothman or these entities are trying to communicate, we just, we don't get it. I mean, you think it would, it would just be a whole different language and um, not that we're cockroaches or, you know, but, and he even says um, not that they may not be more intelligent or better yeah. than mm. us. It's just different. And so the, you know, we're unable to communicate. Hmm. But I think as well, like, because we do, you know, not to get too political or anything, but we do live in a world where people are very unwilling to mm-hmm. understand or accept the simplest thing. You know, how are people supposed to accept something like this when they can't even accept things that are a reality yeah, in totally. their own world? 100%. You know? Yeah. You even mentioned this, and I loved it, in your Jaws episode. I know that's completely different, but okay. <laughs> you were talking about the people and just how unwilling to accept any other possibility mm. they were. Like, you were so furious about it. <laughs> You're like, these fucking ass. <laughs> like, they can't. They can't. They're, they're like, unwilling mm. to even say that maybe this isn't the shark. Maybe this isn't the right shark. Yeah. Like, let's... <laughs> yeah. And I thought that it was a really great commentary on society in general. And then this is what you're bringing up now as well. And it's just so true. Yeah. We don't, we don't, we just don't want to know. And like people just aren't like me, there's things I don't believe in, but you know what? I'll have a listen, you know, and I'm always open to the possibility that I could be wrong. You know, of course I'm not fucking perfect. Like, but it's when people are so, no, that is impossible. Like, like I said, I don't believe in God or that, but I don't turn around and go, it's not there. It's just not there for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's there for the people and that's fucking great. It's just not there for me. You know what I mean? Rain. You're my people, man. (laughs) I love everything you're saying. It's so true. Yeah, I'm totally, I might go to hell. Mm. I I don't believe in it. And Mm. I fully, in uh, to my core, but do I know for sure? No, God didn't give me a tour of everything. Or (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) There there might be, and I might be going there. I have no idea. But all I could do is make the best, you know, decision or, you know, hypotheses from, you know, my own experiences and. But I suppose you could ask someone that is very, like, you know, religious or whatever you want to put it, how do they know for sure? And that's the thing. Like, tell me why you're so sure. Give me, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, then there's this piece um, of doubt 
that is a very bad thing, you know, because if you're, if you, I don't think it is, but I'm just saying like the devil's advocate, if, um, if you fully believe it, because this is what it says, and this is what you believe, and then someone is tempting you to doubt, that would be evil. And so you yeah. can't doubt, you have to have an unshakable faith. Yeah. I remember, um, this is my last little thing. Um, my ex-husband, his mom, she was a lovely woman and she was very, very, very devout Catholic. Mm. And, um, I went to graduate school for religious studies and she begged me not to go. She goes, please don't go because they will make you doubt. They will, they will, um, share things with you that will make you question like the Catholic faith. And I was like, that's exactly why I'm going. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I think that there's that that mm. fear. It's very good at, at breeding fear of questioning or doubting. Yeah. yeah. Keeps you from seeking out additional mm -hmm. information. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I, 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 can, I just couldn't give a shit. I Like, if you don't want to do it, do it. And if you do want to do it, do it. Just don't, just leave me alone. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know, it's just so bizarre. But yeah. yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> people will be like i'm not listening to that bitch anymore <laughs> <laughs> well you know i love it thank you like tawny for sharing this movie because i got to talk about some things that i love too i i did like the movie i i like the ideas of i like the way it made me think deeper and question things because that's one of my favorite things to do is like try to figure things out and question well what did this mean what would, mm. did this mean what i really it, you don't you didn't really i didn't really i didn't really come to a conclusion but i felt there was enough there for me to come to an idea because i've watched some movies where at the end i'm like oh i just have no fucking idea and it doesn't feel very good i felt there was enough there to give you some hypotheses you know yeah and i think there's several ways ways to read several parts and yeah of the movie and you can get a lot out of it like i even started to think like is this maybe a commentary just on obsession right i feel mm -hmm. like maybe i had had that seed planted from watch us watching christine and that is kind of a theme in that movie too is like you know do you choose obsession over living life and mm -hmm. what does it cost you so i don't know i mean that was just my first thing that i was thinking as i was watching it today but I think there's so many things that could be read into it. It just feels like a, it feels like a movie that has heart, you know, I like that yeah. about it. It doesn't feel, I think that's why it doesn't bother me that there's all these elements and it's kind of like loosely woven together because it feels intentional mm. instead of just random. Yeah. I agree with you. You know what? The one thing that was hard for me, I loved all the ways you can look at it. And then I would go back and <clears throat> think, oh, but this is a true story. Hmm. <laughs> like this was based hmm. on true events so now in the framework of this happened what does the mothman like i, I can see it in a whole different perspective right of yeah. okay if this really happened maybe it's not it's it's definitely not all for richard gear's character mm -hmm. you know to come to a <laughs> right. realization there's well, something <laughs> else here <laughs> all for richard so that he could have this acting opportunity right mm -hmm. <laughs> this is why now we know <laughs> <laughs> that was created solely for that. Got all these people to go along with it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, uh, yeah, no, I like the whole not knowing. And I suppose that's like the characters really, because they, they're not sure either. Yeah. You know, and I don't think, like I said, I don't think we need to have, so we always, like I'm one of these people sometimes like, you know, when you watch a horror film, I need someone to survive. I need this. I need this. But I think sometimes we shouldn't be given it and we should be, left to our own devices and because i suppose a lot of people like real life or the film they have to come up with their own beliefs on what this is because it's a real story as well so we should have to as well and i think yeah. they do a good job of making us do that yeah good point you know? yes very good point mm -hmm. you know so so coming away from it do you believe in the mothman <laughs> <laughs> i think i, I do believe yeah, yeah i think i, I do think as well I do. And is he a good witch or a bad witch? <laughs> that I don't know. Yeah, it seems that's... like he's neither. Yeah. He just is. Like he was saying, like these things just exist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, because you could see it both ways. Like if he's trying to interfere where it, but in a good way, where he sees that you're open. And so he's trying to give you tips. Um, we see it as evil because we're, we feel like we're losing our mind. 
because the communication path is not clear, is not there. So we feel like we're losing our mind. And if he really is presented as how he is and in that form that we we see him, we immediately think of demons and devils because mm. of what we've seen. Yeah. Um, but maybe that's not at all. Maybe he's like, man, yeah, I look like this gargoyle thing. But that's not <laughs> bad where I come from. This is yeah. actually very beautiful where I come Don't from. Don't judge me on how I look. <laughs> yeah, geez. <laughs> I'm trying to help you guys. Uh, because, I mean, it kind of I mean, it was sad at the end, but and then there was – but then there was that juxtaposition of where he saved, you know, Her. that woman. Yeah. Because she knew she would live through that. So it, yeah, it's very hard, but I do believe, I believe in the Mothman. <laughs> Please don't visit me. Yeah. yeah I, I believe in that you made me, <laughs> <laughs> that gave me chills up my spine. You noticed them and they noticed you noticing them. Yeah. So then I was like, Oh shit! I don't, I just got cold chills now. It's like I don't even want to do research on this. I don't want anyone noticing I noticed them. <laughs> well, just to let you two know, when you go to bed tonight, you live in the same country as the Mothman, and he can drive over state lines. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> West Virginia is a long ways away. That's the other side of the it's country. Worth the, it's worth the trip, mate. It's worth the trip. Yeah. <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> I hear them talking about me. West Virginia is getting boring. I've been here for so long. Same annual parade. Same museum. I'm over it. Let's let's head that way. Tony, you're first on the path, right, to my house. Uh, we're like we're the same. We're we're okay. in a vertical line, pretty much. Oh shoot! I'm so, not very good with geography. He's waiting so. until you meet up, and then he's going to just join the both of you. Right. <laughs> Get us at the same time. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Oh, God. Um, so have you anything else you'd like to, you can think of or add? I don't have anything else. That was Me a either. great fun conversation. It was. Yeah. I wasn't sure. I, I think with some films, because they're not so obvious, you don't know how it's going to go. So I was a bit nervous, I'll be honest with you, to talk about this one. This is why I rewatched it this evening before I, I spoke to you, because I was like, oh, I don't think I know anything about this. And then I was watching <laughs> it and I was literally like, I don't remember that happening. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably a good job that I did. I don't. I don't know why that happens to me when I watch some films. I mustn't be. I must zone out. I, must have no I think it. Span. It depends on what type of mood I'm in, at right. least. Yeah. Right. Like I'm the same. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So I got to be like ready for a slow burn, or if I'm feeling impatient, like it's really hard to sit down and watch something that's some like this, where it's, mm. you know, the pace is a little bit slower, and you have to be kind of paying attention to what's happening. I mean, there's like yeah. some blink and you miss miss it moments. Mm. There's that mm. one where he slams the um door in in the mirror you see the face of the mothman yeah. see i don't it's remember like, that yeah it's so fast <laughs> yeah it's so fast yeah that's the only time i feel like that you actually you were saying you get a good look at him with the kids in the car i feel like that's the best look you get at him because mm. it it is almost like you can see his face yeah it's so quick or it could be injured cold i don't know both of them because it seems like he takes different forms who knows but yeah it's um it's okay if you hated it, <laughs> obviously, but I do think there's just something to this, and I want to do a deep like dive. I'm sure somebody's done an analysis on this, mm. but I was like afraid to read about it beforehand because I try not to like be influenced by other people's mm. opinions or thoughts. <laughs> and I didn't. Yeah, I won't like... listen to a podcast episode if I know I'm gonna do it. Yeah, same. Because, Us too. Yeah, because I yeah. know it get in there, and then you're like, was that me or them? You know, you yeah. can't really. You don't want to constantly go cite your source through the whole episode. No. Lorraine said, Lorraine said, Lorraine. <laughs> right. Right. Just go right. listen to Lorraine's episode. <laughs> yeah. I don't what even know why said. I'm recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but I enjoyed this and I would recommend it to um, to someone for sure. And I'm glad I watched it and I'm glad I watched it the second time. So I'd, I'd say that as well. If you watch it first time, maybe, you know, Maybe leave, maybe make sure you've got the time to actually sit down and watch it. Yeah. You know, I think it yeah. is definitely one of those films. And you, you're right. You have to be patient with it and you have to be in the mood to actually sit down. Because, yeah, there's certain films. I know I couldn't watch this film if I just felt like putting something on to, to wash over me. I couldn't watch oh, this. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's important. Whereas, you know, you can put on something like Scream. And you can just be like, oh, just put it on and it's fine. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. agree. I'm going to rewatch it because I rented it. So I'm going to rewatch it. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. I want to know how you feel about it. And I just wanted to say the last thing that I just thought of, but, and I've already talked about this a little bit, but I do mm -hmm. think the filmmaking in this movie is really incredible. Mm. There's just a lot of good stuff in here. I like the shots, the mm -hmm. editing choices, the sound design is really good. Like th there's like this real 
you know, I don't know. It's it's this really good feeling. I feel like not mm. it's not good, but they they <laughs> what am I trying to say? They definitely achieved what they set out to achieve. Mm-hmm. It has a very distinct mm-hmm. feeling about it and there's like great shots. And I, I mean just the stalking, you know, I I think I mentioned that already. It makes it gives you this omnipresent sense of this creature. It just I just I'm really impressed by that and I don't think I noticed that until this watch that I was yeah. like man they really were thinking about this in a holistic way for mm-hmm. the entire movie and I just think they pulled it off in a really smart fucking way. No, I agree. Yeah, I, agree. I agree and it stressed too. me out. I find myself yeah. getting quite stressed with it at times which I think is a really good job when an actor especially Richard Gere when he could when you can do that to someone. Like I'm almost like I need 5 minutes you know because he's just so intense and it's exhausting watching him sometimes because he's just so manic yeah Yeah. you know and the whole like ambiance of it the atmosphere like it's really like I love dull weather I'm not a summer person so this is kind of like really my vibe but even at times I was like bloody hell man you know I need something bright you know I'm so cold Cold and bitter yeah Yeah. it's added to like painful and when that's when I'm saying that believe me that's that's weird because it's I bad. love my doom and gloom. I'm not summer at all. I'm like, get away from me, son. <laughs> you know oh, I mean? me too. I swear I could live in Seattle where it rains all the time. Oh. I love the rain. It's my favorite yeah. weather ever. If I yeah. wake up and it's raining, I'm I'm in yeah. pure bliss. Move, move but to this, England. Do you get loads of it? <laughs> oh, I'll have to. This, I agree with you. It, mm. I even noticed it. Mm. I was like, God, I feel like they hurt. It's yeah. so cold there. Yeah. yeah. And Tawny, yeah, there was like you, there's, it's so quick. Like in, mm. there was one in the hotel room, not the picture one, but another in the hotel room where it was like, you were watching him mm. and then you were his point of view. And it was mm. super fast. I, there were several times I had to rewind just mm. like 10 seconds because I wanted to see it again. I did that yeah. a couple of times with stuff. I was like going back a few seconds. What did he say? What did he do? Cause yeah, it was very snappy in, in parts, but yeah. yeah, no, it was very well, uh, very well put together. Um, but yeah, so I'm glad you picked it. Yeah. Thank you, Tawny. That was yeah. great. I am too. I I didn't realize neither of you had seen it. <laughs> crazy. Was it? Was it? Do you, Do you do the social media, Tawny? No, I'm. No, so- me and me and Haley do it. We have a. I used to be the one that solely did it, and then we um we hired someone on, so she does a lot of the social media, and then I I let Tawny know. But Tawny does go on. She will comment, like she'll interact and have some conversations with oh, people. Okay. But as far as the social media and the messages, uh, that's why. Yeah, that would be. Me, oh god so who was the time. exorcist person i was talking to was that her no that was felicia no oh it was you. yeah okay. i respond to all of them yeah oh, okay. i she doesn't mess sorry i didn't explain that well she doesn't message anybody she'll let us know there are messages oh okay she'll just do posts i'm the one that oh she does everybody. the con all oh, right okay i got you yeah because yeah. Yeah, yeah. i felt really bad when i said that because like i forget oh, no. people don't know me and like no. you know i re- when i read that i just realized that it came across probably <laughs> different nope, not at all <laughs> No, not at all. And was that the one, Felicia? I think we were on. We, her I and did. I were talking as she was messaging you. And so yep. it was kind of uh, like we were both messaging you. Oh, that's good. That's she good. was relaying. Yeah. <laughs> and everything I always share with Tawny. Yeah. I'm like, hey, so-and-so messages this. This is what I was saying. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever. So we're yeah, I do real. It. Not, I'm not good at getting on the it's social media. My, <laughs> I, do an, I do another podcast with a film one with my friend, my best mate. And she's really good at all the editing and stuff like that so I just said to her look you do that I'll do all the social media because she's the same she just doesn't want to she she does she does it when she feels like but it's not something that she naturally goes to so I said let's use our strengths <laughs> you do yeah, all the yeah. editing and Tawny. that's yep. me and Tawny Tawny I does all the editing. editing she's amazing it's so boring. <laughs> it is kind of monotonous yeah that's the worst thing about doing a solo because I have to do all myself <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah, so she's definitely, um, oh, well, that's cool. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad we did it. So uh, thanks for coming on, guys. Um, do you want to let everybody know exactly where they can find you and stuff? I know you kind of touched on it at the beginning. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we are Two Chicks and a Horror Flick. You can find us on any podcatcher, your favorite podcatcher. You can even ask Alexa. She'll play you. I have to look at her because she. Whenever I say that, she yeah, they come on to talk to me. <laughs> um, you can find us at two chicks in a horror dot com, and that will lead you any anywhere else you want to find us. If it's Patreon, our Discord horror community, Instagram at two chicks in a horror flick. Um, yeah, you can go there, and that's like our hub where you can find us anywhere else you like. 
Brilliant. Well, uh, thanks so much for coming on and uh, don't go straight away. And uh, yeah, I will uh, chat to you again very soon, I'm sure. Thank you so All much right, for having welcome. us. This is so You're much welcome. fun. Yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. I would just like to give a big thank you to the two girls from Two Chicks and a Horror Flick. It was really nice chatting to Tawny and Felicia and make sure you go check them out and listen to their episodes. They are amazing. Um, before I go, I'd like to play a promo for Wine, Dine and Storytime podcast. So go check them out. This is Wine, Dine, and Storytime. I'm Nydia. I'm Dana. I'm Cindy. And we're your hosts. Have you ruined a family gathering by asking what wine pairs well with eating a husband? Are you the CEO of TMI? Have you ever been kicked under the table because you brought up your favorite dinner topic, atrocities throughout history? Then this podcast is perfect for you. Each week, Dana and I share stories based on topics that include true crime, historical shenanigans, unexplained mysteries, and all things fascinating while our our amateur chef Cindy prepares themed dinners and pairs wines based on those topics. Find us, the Wine, Dine, and Storytime podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts and give us a follow. And also, if you want to follow me, you can go to Once Upon a Nightmare podcast on Instagram, a nightmare pod on Twitter, and Facebook as Once Upon a Nightmare. Thanks for listening, and I will chat to you again very soon. Thank you. Bye.